When I first got into 3D printing, supports were terrifying to me. I saw them as this sort of mysterious thing that often wouldn't stick to the bed, would make post-processing a pain, and usually would render my part either completely useless or at least just looking downright bad. Over the years, supports have begun to bother me less and less with the evolution of slicing software getting better and better and my overall understanding of how and when to use them accordingly also improving. Now, if you have a dual extrusion 3D printer, then you have the luxury of printing with PVA if you're printing with PLA, which PVA is a water soluble support material, which makes supports much less of a headache because when you print with it, when your part's completed, you could just then submerge it in a bucket of water and then after a certain amount of time, the supports are just gone and you're left with your finished part. But for the majority of us, especially those using hobby level 3D printers, we don't have the luxury of using PVA because we have a single extrusion 3D printer. For the majority of us, we're stuck using the same material for our main part as well as the support or the scaffolding material, which means that it does require a little bit of thought and planning in order to make sure that you have them implemented in a way where it supports your model but doesn't make it a complete nightmare to remove. Now, Cura's supports have really evolved over the years and for most use cases, if I just use Cura's default slicing parameters and their default support settings, I just tell it whether I want the supports from just the platform or if I want the supports everywhere uh, and I hit slice, usually it does a really good job. But there are some times where the predefined supports or the algorithm generated supports just don't make a whole lot of sense to me. Recently when I went to go print this awesome model of Ryuk that was modeled by Photos Mint, it was a pretty much supportless model with the exception of one part under one of his legs that needed supports. Well, in Kira, if I told it to do supports from the platform, it would not get in between his legs since it was within the print. And if I chose to do supports everywhere, it had supports all over the place. And sure, you can use things like support blockers built into Kira, but in this situation, that would have been a really big pain. What I ended up doing was using a plugin that exists for Kira that allows you to actually generate custom supports. It's super nifty, and again, although Kira does a really good job nine out of 10 of the times, if not even more than that, there are times where being able to generate custom supports is incredibly valuable. So in this video, I'm gonna show you guys how to easily install the plugin, how to use the plugin, and what a huge difference it made when printing that Ryuk model. This is something that I think is incredibly valuable and a really awesome tool to have in your arsenal of 3D printing tools. I hope you guys are looking forward to the video. Let's get right into it. So hopping over to Cura, this is Cura 4.6.1. You're gonna head to the top right under the marketplace and scroll down to where it says custom supports. That is the custom support plugin. And if you click on that, just go ahead and click install. A window is gonna pop up and just basically prompt you uh, to accept and it will install just about instantly. And once you install, you do need to click the quit Cura button, which will close out a Cura and reopen it and then it will be uh, activated and the plugin will be available. So this is the model that we're working with here and this model only needs supports under the right leg. The one that's actually up at an angle isn't at a steep enough angle to where supports are required but the other leg on the right side because the leg goes straight out there's some area uh, a little small area underneath it where it's going to need some supports to help out with the first couple of layers and so just to show you guys if you hit generate supports and hit everywhere in Kira and go ahead and hit slice. I just want to show you guys what it outputs automatically. So this is a 23 hour and 19 minute print and it's using 223 grams. And then if I go to the preview window, you can see exactly where it's creating supports. So it's creating supports under the entire left leg, the entire right leg, under some of the skulls. And yes, you can use support blockers to basically say, do not generate supports here or here or here. But because of how much supports it's trying to generate, that just doesn't really make a lot of sense. And what does make sense is creating a custom support. So if you click on your model on the left uh, little window there, there's the custom support icon, which kind of looks like a Tetris piece. You click that and then go over to your model and click where you want the support to be placed and it'll create a block. Now with that block, you can manipulate it just like you would any model in Cura. So this will allow you to scale that block. Um, you can make it you know, wider or um, taller. And then you can also use the move functionality to move it up or down or wherever you need to. So all you're gonna do 
is take a little bit of time and size the support block accordingly. So for me here, I'm just trying to figure out what the correct height is and I position it by moving it a little bit below the knee because that's where I really need the supports to start. And it doesn't take very long to just get one of these blocks put in place. I think I spent a total of, I don't know, two to three minutes just stretching it and moving it around until I was happy with the overall output. And uh, again, it's just a little bit of moving around the, uh, I guess, camera angle or the view so that way you can make sure that you've got the block placed correctly. So here I'm getting closer to being happy with the finished result, but when I change the angle, I can clearly see that the box is not um, in the middle of the leg. So I'm going ahead and making it a bit smaller. And when I'm happy with the width of it, I'm just gonna go ahead and slide it a little bit to the left, which makes it so it's completely centered with the leg. And the last thing I wanna do here is just make it a little bit uh, taller because if you look on the bottom where the foot's at, you can see that it's not fully going down covering that opening. So that looks pretty good. And I think I'm happy with the end results on this one. Now in Cura supports, there's a bunch of settings that you can choose from. So you can activate and deactivate them by clicking on the little gear wheel and then clicking on these boxes to make them pop up in your kind of quick menu. Now, when you're using custom supports, you actually wanna make sure that the generate support box is not checked. However, you do want to check that box while you're working with the custom supports because you can change values like support density. So if you want the supports to be a little bit denser, you activate supports, change it to 20 or 30%, and then just deactivate it before slicing. So that way it only creates, um, it only slices for those custom support blocks and uh, Cura doesn't automatically generate all those additional support, uh, supports that you saw previously. So now that you see here, the print's gonna take 17 hours and seven minutes compared to 23 hours and 19 minutes, and it's only gonna use 192 grams of plastic. And as you can see, there is the little box under the right leg that we created, which is so much better and much nicer than what Cura had automatically put, which was just supports everywhere. So I went ahead and printed both of these models out, just to kind of show you a left and right comparison of what Cura's default ones look like versus what just placing the custom support looks like. And it made a huge difference. The one with the custom support took two seconds to clean up while the other one required much more um, to remove all the different supports that were kind of woven within the legs of the model. So again, this is something super easy to do, something valuable, and you might not need to use it often, but there are times you will need to use it. And it is something that you will thank me for knowing if you didn't know it already, um, you now know how to do this. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below if this is something that you've used before or something that you find valuable that you'll try out. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there's always new content for you guys to watch and on that note guys i look forward to seeing you guys in my next video this has been daniel from modbot and i'm out peace guys